We are here in Turnbull Hall um, at Glasgow University uh, Chaplaincy and it's South Park Avenue and it's a Eucharistic exhibition that the young Blessed Carlo Acutis um, gathered together before he died at 15 years old. You'd find out that, about the, the real presence of the Eucharist, that, you know, it's a real person that you receive in Holy Communion and this is your God and he is, you know, doing these Eucharistic miracles throughout the world for you and me to strengthen our faith and our love and his most sacred heart. Life in the Eucharist is a Eucharistic evangelization project which began in Houston, I would say about 28 years ago. Now from Texas, what happened was one of the priests came over to Scotland and really planted the Life in the Eucharist seed into a group of people um, in the Congregation of the Blessed Sacrament here. And so it's grown and it's grown and it's grown and it's become much more fruitful to its original intention which was Eucharistic evangelization led by lay people for lay people. And the Life in the Eucharist program is basically hinging always on the power of witness. And so you get men and women in workplaces, men and women who have families, men and women who are people of the street, able to deeply reflect on how they have encountered Jesus in the Eucharist in the everyday living out of their lives. That's the power, that's the beauty of what life in the Eucharist offers uh, to the Catholic community. And it's done so in Scotland now for 27 years. Uh, the exhibition is really fantastic. It's took a lot of effort to get here and uh, we're really pleased of the, the end result. Uh, one of the pinnacle parts of the, uh, the exhibition is we've managed to receive a first class relic that some of the team members, the team leader Maria, went over to Assisi personally to collect it from uh, Carlo's uh, tomb and they were able to spend a few days there and uh, we, uh, the, we we're really fortunate to have this relic, uh, there's a big uh, demand for it and it's just it's, it's such a blessing to add to it and we just hope that it brings many blessings to those that come to both see the, the exhibition. Uh, we're here today, that which is the 4th, and Friday tomorrow the 5th. Saturday the 6th, up until I think it's half past four, we have benediction. And then we're hightailing it down to Glasgow Cathedral for night fever. Now you need to come to this night fever. It's absolutely beautiful beautifully done, the church is in darkness, candles all over the place, uh, the music, beautiful singers, um, we have the priests in different you know, corners um, hearing confessions and the young ones are out in the town inviting everybody and anybody to come in and light a candle, you know, to turn to God. St Peter Julian Aymard, 19th century French priest, from his childhood, really, he, he really sensed that, that God was making a claim upon his life and how St. Peter Julian Abad came to a, a time when he could read his life entirely through the Eucharist. And so he is now known as the Apostle of the Eucharist. But one of the beautiful things about Father Amard was he was an intensely private person but he needed people around him and one of the one of the things that filled his life was project work this kind of thing and so he would quite easily work with groups of lay women groups of lay men and he would actually be very creative in actually communicating the, the key message which is proclaiming the reign of God in the Eucharist uh -huh. and so you know, for example, Emilie uh, Tamissier, you know, the foundress of the International U Eucharistic Congress, he was working in the background. He was the one pushing her forward uh, to get this kind of movement up and running. Now, we're very conscious of the fact that St. Peter Julian is well known in the places where we serve, but not so much in other places. And so this is also an opportunity for us to kind of spread something of the Amardian charism. In 1859, he founded the Aggregation of the Blessed Sacrament, which is for laymen and women. Um, and St. Peter Julian did have that universal vision of the church, universal as in who populates the church, okay? 
everybody from the Holy Father down to the newest baptised Catholic. Everybody has a part to play in proclaiming the reign of God in the Eucharist. And so he did found two religious congregations and this lay aggregation. And the idea is we all lumped together to get on with the business in hand of proclaiming that reign. So come, you can't miss this. It's even this, the piece that's here this morning, you know, that we finally um, managed to get it up and running and I just feel a, a great piece and it's there for you Catholics, um, especially those ones that are staying at home, they're not coming to Mass on a Sunday anymore, they're online. No, it's the real presence. You need to come for Holy Communion. That is your, you know, this is your bread. This is your food. Please come back to the church. Jesus is waiting on you.